Well, guys, we are here at SEMA, Las Vegas, 2022. We're sitting in the racing, uh, racing junk booth. We're happy to be here, finally make it to racing junk. And uh, John, we've got an engine builder for this beautiful Pontiac here. Joel. Joel. It's a 1936 Pontiac. There you 36 go. Pontiac. I'm wrong. For once, Mark I was right. Down. Yeah, for once, I was right, and John was wrong. So I am wrong. Joe, tell us a lot. Tell us a little bit about the car and your role in the build of the car. Okay. Well, uh, going back about five years ago, well, we had just finished a build for uh, a TV personality, David Ankin, and it was a 41 Willys with a Pro Charger, and. Uh, really liked how that turned out and uh, I live in East Tennessee not far from uh, the Garage Mahal and uh, Glen C's shop okay. and uh, so I called him up uh, this one day and says you know, hey Glenn we really need to do a build with a fat fender turbo LS you know that's what we need to do and he says yeah that's a great idea and you know what I just bought a 36 Pontiac from a farmer a couple of days ago. Oh go. my. So, it's so like, this started out as like a farmer, like a field car. It was a field car. It was sitting in a farm outside of Knoxville, Tennessee. Wow. And uh, you know, the uh, idea was that uh, you know, Glenn wanted to do a high level build and enter into the Detroit Auto Around the Riddle Award competition. So for that, you need to have a creative concept, you need to have a story. And, uh, well, East Tennessee is noted for running moonshine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that whole Appalachia region, uh, that's where NASCAR got its start. And uh, so the idea was that this would be a modern-day rendition of a moonshine car. Okay. Uh, what did moonshine cars awesome. look like? Uh, they were uh, fast loud black no chrome right and uh the uh idea with this is that well it's green what's up with that well it's green because it actually has a heavy black base coat under it so at night it turns black sure. uh the fast well the turbo l uh, 1100 horsepower turbo ls that takes care of the fast and it has a full custom frame that was designed specifically from measurements of the original vehicle that was built at Scott's Hot Rod in okay. Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, the loud part, uh, well, that's not a problem. We can dump straight out of the, he uh, the headers through the fenders or flip a switch and it goes down uh, through the tailpipe. It's a little more tolerable if you're cruising down the road. That right. is definite. Yes, I bet. That's definite. Bet. You would not want to be standing near there. Uh, so, uh, anyway, yeah, so the modern day rendition of a moonshine car. And the other thing we love in Tennessee is camo. So, having a car that goes green to black, black to green, sure. sure. So, it hits all of. What's know. general build build time on the car? Uh, he has uh, clocked about 7,000 hours of, uh, of his own labor, and that does not include whatever we did with the engine, whatever mm -hmm. Scott's, uh, the uh, uh, other technical specialists who did different parts of the, of the work. So sure. my guess is it's probably somewhere in the range of 15,000 hours of work. Uh, that, that. So Joe, do you, do you do all your own engine work as a separate entity? Yeah, we're a different. We're a separate company. Okay. I I just happen to live near. Uh, Gloria sure. So why don't you go ahead and plug yourself and your company? Okay. Well, we're uh, Borowski Race Engines, and uh, I'm here on the booth now, kind of doing double duty. The engine that we have on display over here on the stand, that's a 700 horsepower LS. Uh, it's a real popular engine for dropping in rest of mods or whatever. Uh, and we do an annual giveaway uh, with racing junk and uh, with support from CompCam, who so basically supplies us all of the top end parts and the uh, electronic fuel injection, the Sportsman Fast EFI system. So that for us is our entry level engine. Okay. And we go uh, on the uh, using the LS uh, uh, type architecture up through. 4,000 horsepower for all out race cars. And that's a GM block, that's not your block? That one is a GM block that we uh, put on our CNC's, okay. which uh, we, uh, the precision of our, for instance, the cylinder wall when it's done, it's one ten thousandth of an inch. And uh, it's not factory fits all. 
<laughs> no, no. Uh, so, and the, the other thing is even uh, the, the, the home finish, it's a CNC diamond home. Okay. And so uh, the things that we're able to do with our CNC machines, like for instance, the cylinder heads, those okay. RHS heads, but we put them on our five axis CNC to put in whatever combustion chamber port that we want. Uh, yeah, so on the sign it says LS3 heads. Well, that's simply because that's the size of that's the hole. The size <laughs> of the hole. So that's that's the only uh, LS3 type uh, measurement that you'll find on it. Tell us a little bit more about the drivetrain. So what are we running for a transmission oh. rear diff? Yeah, the uh, what we do uh, with a lot of the engines that we ship out uh, is pair them with transmissions. Uh, Usually they're going to be automatics, 480s, mm -hmm. and uh, for years we've been working with Use Performance, who pairs their transmissions to our builds. So they have all of the build specs, the you know cam specs. We you know, share all of our data with them, and uh, you know, we then uh, have the, the 480s, two levels, a thousand horsepower version and a 1500 horsepower version, which okay. fits most of what we do. Uh, so that one is paired with a custom use uh, 4L80 uh, with a specific torque converter for uh, with teamwork. being able to work best with allow the, the turbo to spool up uh, more than, for instance, the, the supercharged engines, which don't require any, any spooling. So, uh, uh, yeah, the, the 4L80s uh, uh, work very well. They can handle the power. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason I got into working with Hughes is because uh, our customers were having problems with their transmissions breaking, and then our shop car was up road racing in, uh, in Michigan and had to get towed back after they supposedly built an, uh, transmission. Uh, yeah, blue. Uh, yeah, so Crazy. it's like, uh, I hate stuff breaking. <laughs> I hate my own stuff breaking, and when a customer stuff breaks, well, then it's even worse. Right. You know, because then I have to deal with them, so they're unhappy. I'm un nobody's happy. Right. So, uh, essentially, after that incident with our own shop car, I said, like, no, I'm on a mission. I need to find who is the best transmission builder I can mm -hmm. work with. That this isn't ever going to happen again. And knock on wood. It hasn't ever oh, happened good. again. Well, see, part of the thing is most of these bills go into street cars. And, uh, and there's a built-in safety mechanism. The engine maybe can it's putting out 1,200 horsepower, but there's not a street tire in the world that's going to hold that. Right, <laughs> right, right. Sure, sure. So if everything is built to that design level, except the tires, yeah, then uh, uh, you know it, uh, it kind of solves a lot of problems. But uh, in in general layman's terms, can you explain the difference between how you would modify a GM block or heads? as having different power adders. You say you're gonna, the engine's different for a turbo than it is for yeah. a supercharger. Okay, well, we'll, we'll take this particular one, uh, this engine as it sits here now, and the one that we just gave away from last year's, mm -hmm. uh, and then that one. Uh, this is naturally aspirated, and uh, uh, yeah. everything is designed for that use. Uh, in order to get this level of power, uh, what we're doing is we're taking a, a GM block and first we're cutting in stroker clearance, then we're decking it, uh, uh, and a very important thing is the home finish that we're putting on it. Because mm -hmm. if you can imagine, 700 horse for the OEs, they all have superchargers on it. This right. doesn't. This is not a big wild cam. This is a daily driver car. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing is we'll put more cubic inches in it. Uh, mm -hmm. By cutting the stroke of clearance, uh, we'll, we go within a four inch stroke and it comes out 408 cubic inches. Okay. So we're adding cubic inches over the, uh, over the standard uh, GM stroke. We're using better parts. Uh, so for instance, uh, not powdered metal connecting rods, they're forged Four. steel, yeah. mm -hmm. everything. So it's all forged internals. Uh, it's, uh, so in that particular one, it's Cali's uh, uh, crank rods, diamond pistons. Uh, okay. So basically, you know, a much higher level of part. Uh, the heads, what we do is we have a five-axis CNC machine. So okay. we get the heads, in this case from RHS, 
uh, they're pretty much what the average enthusiast would take out of the box and bolt on. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's, we put it on our CNC and we will then port the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, intake uh, exhaust uh, uh, side of it. Uh, we'll make mild changes in the combustion chamber okay. uh, so that it's uh, basically less prone to knocking. So we'll, we'll do a number of tweaks, but the main thing is the CNC port work. And the other thing that we have, uh, the other type of machine, is we do CNC valve jobs. And uh, basically most people have never seen or even heard of a CNC valve job. Okay. Uh, the classic uh, uh, valve job, uh, you have a form tool that is a mirror image of the shape that you want. So just imagine the form tool is shaped like your finger, so mm -hmm. you know, it, when it's spinning around, it's cutting off metal, uh, and by the time you're done, it will have basically sh taken off metal to give you the different valve angles that you want. Well, there are a couple of problems with that. The first is every form tool will leave chatter marks. So the only question is, how bad are the chatter marks? Right. How fine do you want them? Right. And uh, mm. so what a lot of people do is they'll do their valve job and they'll put an abrasive in and call lapping mm -hmm. uh, to kind of smooth out their bad machine. I see. Wow. And, uh, uh, our CNC works very differently. We put in the design that we want and then uh, uh, it's a single point cutter that spins in okay. spirals. And so it's two axis, it goes up and down and in and out. And so everything that it can see going down, it can machine, including into the, uh, uh, past the, the guide. And so it'll do the, 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 the smoothing, uh, yeah, and blending, the bowl blender. Right. So essentially there is, is no rough edge, there's no separation. And the other thing is because, well, a couple of things, because it's a spiral and it's a single point cutter, it doesn't generate the heat of basically a form tool going around. If you okay. touch, it, you'll, you'll see a form tool smoking. Yeah. It's so, it's so hot. Whereas this, it's cool to the touch. You can just put okay. your finger on That makes for a smoother cut. Well, it's dimensionally correct because as, as these change temperature, they change in dimensions. Oh, of course. So you have chatter marks, you have dimensional issues. Uh, and so the net result is with us, the valve job is perfect. Okay. Uh, and uh, that's really a big deal. Every NASCAR team has one of these machines. <laughs> but the problem is they only use it a couple of times a year. And the reason is you have to digitize the head. Oh. And so they don't want anybody knowing what they're doing. Right. Where so with us, this is what we use for all of our performance. Well, it sounds to me, Joe, like there's, there's so much detail that goes into, you know, you're not just building an engine. You guys are going right down to, you know, Grinding, you know, ten thousands or hundred thousands or whatever. Your your every every detail is you know exactly what you're doing. Um, you know, there's different levels, obviously, of you know throwing an engine together. And it's not a backyard build for sure. They use, like you said earlier, you want them to last. So it's like a transmission. You don't want the customer to have any issues. So attention to detail is crucial. Yeah. Using the right parts, perfect machining, perfect balancing, you get a different outcome. Absolutely, and I think that. Uh, in this particular car, although you can only see about two and a half square feet of the engine sitting right there, you know based on the detail of the car, but the detail in the engine and what you can't see is likely there as well. Joe, thank yeah. you so much for taking some time with us and telling us a little bit about the car. Is there anything that we missed that you wanted to mention? Well, about? actually, you had asked about the difference between an NA, a turbo, and you know what we do differently with that right. car. So uh, uh, essentially, the guy who won this engine this year had an LS in his pro, uh, and it had a pro charger on okay. it, and it was a 2007 Trailblazer. But he was afraid to turn the boost up because he knew what would happen. He sure. was actually a retired master tech from Saturn. Right. So he knew what the outcome would be. Yeah. So he, he never moved the boost up that much. Uh, so he asked if we could modify it, this one, mm -hmm. to do that. Well, that has plenty of capability to handle the boost, but what we would we do with that is uh, we would uh, uh, essentially uh, use a different dish on the pistons, give it a little less compression, Okay. Uh, a different cam, uh, one designed for boost rather than naturally aspirated, a different finish, home finish on the cylinder wall, a different roughness, uh, uh, 
uh, for, for, for that. And the biggest thing is he wanted to run E85 so he wouldn't need an intercooler because if alcohol has such evaporative cooling right. that you don't have to put an intercooler in. In fact, if you do, it's a restriction. You'll lose power. You'll not gain power. Wow. So, uh, what, uh, the bit, but the other thing is the uh, injectors have to be much larger. We have a question. Yes. Uh, it says here, uh, could that engine replace a uh, blown Tahoe or Yukon 6.2? Uh, well, it's not uh, emissions compliant, but we're not the uh, EPA, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, essentially. But, but it would, but it would certainly bolt in place of it. Yes. And, and, and yeah. it wouldn't and, and, be emissions compliant. You could. Yeah. So actually, the the guy who bought that, the the other thing is besides the bigger injectors, uh, he also went with the high uh, high rise manifold on it because okay. what he had in it was a Holly High Ram. And so basically, fast has uh, something similar dimensionally. Okay. So that uh, we just put that's the fast LSXR, and we went with LSXHR. Okay. Uh, so basically, so that was the difference with him and you know uh, his Procharge mm -hmm. version, uh, and then with the uh, with the turbo. Yeah, you know, this engine was built a number of years ago, so some of the parts we you know changed, but right. essentially. Uh, yeah, the same forged internals, same stroke and uh, whatnot. Uh, we've probably tweaked the cam some since then because we never sit still. Uh, oh, I understand. Uh, Things just, are never finished. Yeah, so uh, essentially, it's essentially the same, but not the same. Uh, uh, you know, as we do change over time. So uh, I'd actually have to go back and look at the build sheet because yeah, it was yeah. so long ago that we actually built it. Yeah. This project has been a long time in the making. But, uh, well, very cool. Well, thank you very much for talking with us for a little bit. My pleasure. Yeah. Thanks. I learned, I learned a lot. Good. <laughs> thank you. Great. You're welcome. Everybody, stick around. There'll be more lives from Racing Junk booth at SEMA 2022. You know, Jason, we sure get to talk a lot. Yes, and some of us more than others. Who, me? I'm not pointing any fingers. Yes, you are. But we want to hear from our listeners. Just go to our website, getoutanddrive.com, scroll to the bottom of the page, and click the listener hotline button. We want to hear from you. Cool stories, breakdown stories. Questions, comments. Hate mail. Even hate mail? Even hate mail. You got a car show in your area? Let us know. Tell us an interesting story. Let us know what you like to get out and drive. Speed over to our friends at RacingJunk.com and sign up for a Pro Club membership. Use the code GETOUT to receive a discount when you sign up for a Pro Club membership. Cruise on over to our website, GetOutAndDrive.com, for all the info you never wanted to know about our podcast. Hit us up on our listener hotline, be the first to know what's happening, get industry news, and grab your Get Out and Drive merch. Connect with us on social media. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Follow us on Twitter at Get Out and Drive Pod. What drives you?